Hello and welcome to another episode of The Real Deal with Anam C. Today we've got a very special guest joining us, someone who was one of my very first friends in the influencer industry about a decade ago, someone who's gone on to become one of my closest friends in the space and beyond. He has a wardrobe full of designer threads, a passport full of travel stamps, a taste for well the finer things in life, and he still manages to do the balancing act so so well on keeping things real. Let's welcome travel and lifestyle influencer Rian George. Rian, welcome to my pod. First of all, correction. I think it's been more than a decade. Really? Yeah, definitely. Do you actually have a clear memory on when we no, first met? No, I don't. Met? But I think I I want to say it's about twelve, thirteen years. So more than. But a decade. I've been a blogger for eleven years. Twelve, it'll be in December. No, but I think I've met you somewhere before that also. Really? Anyway, it's more janam, than a janam decade. Janam Janam ka rishta, as you like to say. <laughs> and thank you for that lovely in- introduction. Another correction: I do not have a wardrobe full of designer threads. I wear very simple clothes. Listen, you can see very basic blue. <laughs> no, no, no! Don't let. No, I'm it's not. Al- it's most often borrowed feathers, by the way. Yeah, but I'm them. not going to let you fool people with that because you do have designer threads. You do wear the regular. But basic no one will things. know also because all the brands are inside. But that's our tab. that's uh, our life. That's no? our vibe. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I think that people get so easily confused about. I mean, we're starting right off with a question over here. Is Can people really ever tell the difference between what we own and what's sourced? Like it's so confusing. I'm sure the audience on wait is this person like when you travel first class? I know you get hounded with a lot of messages. Yeah. Tell can you like start off with telling us something on those lines? Because you travel like you review first class cabins. I love your aviation content Thank in you. general. Uh, do you get bombarded with like wait what's yours and what's not yours yeah definitely i do but i mean honestly um, yes there is i mean in terms of my aviation content i mean it's literally split 50 50 so a lot of those fancy upgrades and everything are hosted by the airline and then i travel smart when i travel in 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 uh, personal capacity which means i rake up the miles and i use certain perks uh, that uh, you know make sure that i can travel in a premium class non sponsored so it really is uh, quite a mix you know i try to make it look uh, as As effortless as possible, even when it is um, a hosted gig, but it is what it is. I feel like you are someone who's had this very interesting journey, where you've worked in aviation, you've been a full-time journalist. You were one of the first journalists to transition to being an influencer so many years ago. For anyone who may not know you, can mm-hmm. you give us like a thirty-second snippet of the last like? Twenty twenty five your career journey like oh what all you've God. done. That's a very good question. I uh, after I came back from my university studies in France, I did a short stint uh, in um, in the aviation industry. Followed by I jumped right into the field of journalism where I worked at a luxury magazine for a good. My first job was a good ten years. And then I mean I went on to practice full time luxury journalism for a good fifteen sixteen years. At the same time, I was also a um, qualified French teacher because language teaching language is something that I enjoyed doing ever since I was the age, uh, ever since I was sixteen, seventeen. So I started teaching French at the age of eighteen. I got my certification by the age of twenty. So effectively, it's been about twenty-four years of me teaching French, and I've been doing that all along. Whether I was a journalist or whether I mean, even as a creator today, whatever I'm doing right now. I continue to keep my craft as a French teacher alive. So I mean, I still uh, practice that very much. So I still practice journalism. I do write about uh, three to four uh, features uh, a month for some publications, and of course, I'm a full time creator. Yeah, I mean that's. And now, over the last few years, you've also transitioned into having your own PR set up. You're yes, managing absolutely. clients. Yes, absolutely. Tell me more about that because I feel not enough people know you're doing that, and you're doing such a great job at it. I know you started out with a lot of clients based in Sri Lanka because yes. you have split time between Mumbai and Colombo for so yeah. long. And I have to say that I mean, among my first clients about seven, eight years ago was a, a cl- hotel client in Sri Lanka, and you, Anam, were one of my first guests, and you were, uh, you know, Anam has been as a creator one of my first. Supporters when I started out representing hotel clients, and of course uh, she has been to each and every one of my hotel ever since. Hotel clients ever since. Um, yeah, I mean that's something I, I thought. I mean there is a logical progression as a creator. Okay, for now, um, for now I'm posting nice glamorous pictures, you know, good outfit of the day and everything. But you know what? It's a very um, the the reality is that it is a very vain and fickle industry and. um our looks are also looks body everything fades with time 
So eventually at the age of 45 or 50, no one's going to want to see a 45 or 50 year old man doing an outfit of the day or twirling around in a destination. So it may, I mean, you have to enjoy it while it lasts. For now, it's lasting. It's going on right now. But one must always have a plan B. So my plan B is obviously to help brands and uh, especially hospitality, luxury brands, um, use my expertise and experience of all these years to help them build their brands as well, have their social media content and then work with influencers and everything, you know. So I think especially in this creator space, it's very important for everyone to have a plan B. That's the reality of it. One of the things that I think you and I have bonded over time and time again, and we have had, mind you, a lot of offline conversations, guys. Like we truly have had and we've analyzed and psychoanalyzed everything way more than we should be admitting online, on the internet, on social media. Um, like, But one of the many things that I think you and I have bonded over is the idea of having a healthy real life offline having like you said that reality check that backup option um i was having this conversation with somebody else on the pod a couple of episodes ago where i said has it almost become like bollywood like you know where everyone has a shelf life everyone has a cycle of relevance um and you know like you said make the most of it while you know things are great and you can't really do anything once it's not because it's about the audience and then there's the algorithm factor everybody's favorite word um and you've got a really nice strong backup but can you give me a little bit more on how you think or what you think would happen to a creator that didn't have a backup option or that didn't evolve over a period of time because you've been doing i mean not just as a content creator even journalism at the end of the day it's you're being you are a content creator even if it's not in the capacity of an influencer yeah but how many old world old school journalists my colleagues have become mm. irrelevant because they've not managed to keep up with the times and how many of them used to diss influencers and so many of them now have also become influencers yeah desperately trying I, <laughs> you went there first not yeah. me <laughs> for the record yeah. what is your opinion on that because i also feel like um, there are so many journalists who, like I said, would love to like take a little piss on an influencer and say, oh, they just take pictures and there's no strategy to it. There's no this to it. And now you see them doing brand collaborations on Instagram. And now you see them doing influencer things and yet calling other influencers influenzas, mm. like we're a disease. Mm. With a tinge of irony. So much. Yeah. What is like where? What is your thought in that zone? Like, what do you think is? Oh, I have on? a I have very strong opinions on that because I know that when I started making digital content, I was in full time journalism. I was at an editor level, and the kind of uh, disdain I got from some of my colleagues because. Uh, uh, let's face it, there are a lot of journalists, there is a large chunk of journalists that have this intellectual elitism, I like to call it, and uh, which is not justified. Honestly, everybody's just doing their job. I mean, you could be doing anything, whether you're a doctor or a storekeeper or a laundromat owner or anything, but everybody's just doing a job. So there's no reason for anyone to be intellectually elite. So looking down on people and calling them influenzas and everything has been, I mean, that's something I've faced a lot. Uh, but of course, I mean, the tables have turned. The VIP invites no longer go to, um, to just, just the journalists. The journalists are sharing uh, the front row seats with all the bloggers that they might hate. And it's just... Um, and the reality of a fact... Um, I mean, I was at an event once and there was a very senior journalist who uh, herself had not managed to... Hated social media and herself had man not managed to kind of upgrade her skills. And we were at an event and she was like she saw some creators like these young girls who are most respectfully doing their job. And like this, this journalist was like ripping her apart. And I said, you know what? Then after a point, I really lost it. And I was like, you know what? Uh, just let her do her job. She's not interfering with any of us. And you know, whatever it is, you say credibility or credibility and everything. But for her being here for one hour is probably earning more than your monthly paycheck. Ouch. So S T F U. <laughs> How did she do that? <laughs> she didn't talk to me after that. I may not understand the TikToker who is dancing and, you know, uh, shaking their booty for six seconds and getting five million views. I may not understand it, but I respect it and I understand that they need to have a place next to me. But that also comes from the fact that you have also always been very non-elitist, very open-minded. Like one of the things that I think you do also is when you're, whether you're in a rickshaw, whether you're in a train, whether you're, uh, you know, whether you're on a hat gadi, it doesn't matter. You've always been so uh, candidly, 
I mean, you'd wear an AP on one hand and say my shirt was from Hill Road in the yeah, sea at the same time. Yeah, I did time. A, last year also. I did that. Oh, I think I did some reel where I was like, I driving an S class one day and I got out of it and jumped into a rickshaw because there was too much traffic in Bandra. Yeah, you know. But not many people get that, and I think that and not many people want to show it. Also, you know, like people will be like, she shoe. Why do you think that is really truly? Because I know I I I get that just as much as you. I had this conversation with Aditi in my first episode on the pod as well because you know even she had posted some stories about uh, traveling by BST bus, and I feel like what is this need in today's day when we're constantly talking about everybody should be welcome, the attitude should be you can sit with me, right? I feel like the closed doors that did exist more. Clearly, ten years ago, have opened. Yes, so, sure. what is this need to hold on to the idea of, oh, but you can't do this? Oh, you, you know, like wh- where is that coming from? Why are we still? Yeah, image. I mean, especially among creators in the maybe in the premium segment, luxury segment, they want everything to look so curated and perfect, and they want their lifestyle and everything depicted on the gram to look so perfect. that i think it's very important for all of us to show the real side also you know i mean everything doesn't have to be a produced shoot and have you know you anama leading the pack of people who shows up on camera with no makeup with dark circles and hair in a messy bun and everything i've shown up at your podcast with coconut oil in my hair <laughs> <laughs> i just feel like um for how long you know cuz the minute you're out there to make everything seem curated you're putting up an act and invariably at some point the curtain's going to drop so like where how long are you going to keep that's you know to me the the fear and the worry for others cuz i think that you and i are so just unabashed in our ways yeah. of like listen you judge us you judge us we don't care we we living our truth you know um i can i can i share this incident like with everybody it was a really fun stupid one i think it was a lakme fashion week grand finale a couple of years ago and riyan and i live just a couple of lanes away from each other and we said that dude we are not going to make it in time for this show because if we drive obviously we're going to get stuck in traffic and typically when we're doing these shows him and i coordinate one will pick the other up it's just easier we yeah. get company and we said oh my god should we just take the local train and go and him and i wearing the designers outfits i had a bag in my hand where i had my heels and i was in like literally chappals we jumped onto the uh, train in bandra we got off was it grand town, road yeah journey road journey road and we went to opera house yeah, for the grand for finale the show. and uh, enjoyed the show had a great time and we were there with, in 20 minutes and yeah yeah and we came back and we jump back yeah. onto the train to come back home yeah. and a couple of people were like oh my god did you really take the train and we were like yeah we would have missed the show if yeah. we didn't take the train yeah so that's just i think that's who, who we are who we are very um, unabashedly i mean you recently crossed 100k followers on mm. instagram so firstly congratulations on that but like you have high quality followers mm. more than anything else right and i think now we've come to a point where we've realized it's not about the 1 million mark it's about that roi it's about the brands that are paying you a pretty yeah. penny is that pretty penny worth it yeah. so tell me can you just give me a little bit about that 10% what kind of feedback do they give you why i don't know they just say that like i remember one um, uh, uh, luxury car brand uh, who doesn't work with me saying that oh uh, you know because i've seen you wearing like um high street we've seen you wearing high street clothes and like some of your posts have been like at home and not very luxury and everything so at least i appreciate the honesty but Like, they take no. that this to you like yeah, 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 yeah. they have said this to your yeah, face yeah say that you know like uh, we felt that some of the other posts and the other brands were not like um in keeping with our whatever so so no i i mean in fact i appreciate the honesty i said please give me the honest feedback i'd much rather someone tell me oh, than not me i feel like personally at some point these brands are going to have to expand and broaden their horizons just keeping in mind that everybody wants to look at people that have a personality hmm. people are getting more and more attached to the idea of their favorite creators and so they don't want just the content aspect you know what i mean like i was unwell a while back and i was missing from the instagram for a solid 10 days and people would reach out and be like where are you what's happening is everything okay because it's so unlike me to not post an instagram yeah. story for like 10 days straight yeah. um so i feel like people are Go, getting into the space of wanting to know the creator's life even mm. beyond just content yeah is there one particular memory that you have that makes you feel like okay you know what i've arrived this is everything yes absolutely any guesses 
I should guess. Yeah, I think you should guess. Like the highlight of my year last year. I think it was when you went for the Apple event. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, tell me about that because so I was, I was so invited, happy when I saw this. I was invited by Apple to be the first uh, lifestyle creator from India to uh, go there to Cupertino for their iconic September event, and that for me was the highlight of my twenty years. You know, you felt like you've arrived. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was really a special moment. You have been working with Apple for so many years. For years, now. but I mean, to go there to actually be invited there is a like I mean, with like global celebrities and like you know, largely people from the tech industry. But yeah, it was a big deal for me, and I'm is very honored. Is there a low that you can think of specifically where you felt like what the fuck? I need to switch jobs like stat. Never, never. कुछ तो होगा. I think, uh, uh, I think I would say in my full time journalism job, yes, because I felt sometimes that it is become. It was when I was in full time journalism, it was stagnating because I was like, you know, now magazines are becoming so advertisement advertisement driven that you can't write about, uh, you can't write about anything that you please because everything you have to please advertisers and everything. so uh, that would definitely be one of the demotivating moments but i mean from my creator life i can't think of anything that like i mean there are the obvious lows like you know when your posts don't get the engagement that one expects or you know if you lose out a gig to some competitor whatever it is but no i don't think uh, from this space there's been any like i mean i've been very fortunate yeah tell me a little bit more about like Yeah, you and I get along. We're friends, but you and I have also, you know, in general, chatted about so many newer creators coming in, which is great for the industry at large. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, offline, we've also had conversations about people and their behaviors changing when their followers go yeah, up. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, what has what has your just overall stance and experience been on that? Because again, this is something that happens a lot that isn't talked about enough. There's this, um, everyone's of course trying to do their best to gain more followers and everyone's of course trying their best to work with better brands, just up themselves in any and every capacity mm. as a creator. But what's the dark side of it when you actually do become really successful? Like what have your experiences been like? Because you're someone who didn't ever really, you didn't let anything get to your head ever. Oh. But what has your experience been like from people who probably did? Like you know, like I'm definitely like I've come across a lot of like the more junior creators who will come up to me, and the minute they come up to me, they start talking about, um, oh, you know, my post got like ten thousand likes, and I like they start talking shop and talking numbers within the first like. you know first two seconds only and i just find that in such poor taste because i really don't care and i would love to interact with you beyond your numbers and i mean if one is not able to discuss anything beyond that like you know um i've interacted with people where in the first minute they're like oh what's your follow account at right now Ooh. yeah like i just found i find that so tacky you know like uh, i uh this thing i remember i was at an international destination with uh, at an international creators uh, event and there were these two uh, uh, creators from some foreign country and you know i just introduced myself to them and the first question they asked me so how many followers do you have i just found it so tacky you know like so uh, such an awful thing to say to someone like I would never ask you. I don't care. I would like ask you where are you from? What's it, what do you what do you cover? What kind of videos you make? Or are you enjoying the place? I would never say the first question. Hey, how many followers do you have? Yeah, in my head, when you ask someone, oh, how many followers do you have? In my head, it's in the like first you, question before, how are you also? Yeah, and it's kind of equivalent of being like, hey, how much money do you make a month? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just. Don't you find it tacky? I do. I do. I will admit I do, and I also feel like just the more polite way of if you're trying to figure out. What the position in the jungle is, or whatever. Just, just go to the Instagram to, yeah, feed and see, na. Just go. Don't ask, because like I feel like yeah, I agree. That is a little bit tacky. I've never thought about it in a sense that uh, from the first question or the last, I'm like first in question. general, don't ask. Just go to the profile and see. Ask For my handle and go see. I had yeah. a very interesting question that someone asked me on a brand trip. um by a russian creator who was just one of the nicest people i interacted with on that trip i remember she said why don't you do more content in your own local language because she was vlogging on that trip as well and she was obviously vlogging in her native language and wondering why i was vlogging in english mm. and she said don't you speak indian and i was like no it's i mean largely hindi is spoken in india of course we do have several other languages and she said why don't you 
you know um speak in your native language and i said because actually we do consume a lot of our content in english as well there's no like fixed way around it and i she was like oh what's your youtube and she literally like took my you know youtube handle and went over and subscribed and i realized that okay she was looking me up and that's the polite way of going about it where you're yeah. like just make conversation instead of asking directly <laughs> yeah like um there has to be some really shitty interaction you've had with someone because i've had many i'll be honest when like i've met certain people who've like gushed over me the first time they met me because they're new creators and then cut to like maybe a year or two years later when they're in similar followers because i don't have i'm not even close to a million you know what i mean like i'm sitting at somewhere on the 300 k on insta mark which is considered very average in today's day and age uh, <laughs> more we, on that later yeah we should we should touch upon that to be honest also and i realized oh my god i sense a difference in behavior yeah of course but I can't wrap my head around it. Re, really. it feels like just be respectful of someone, irrespective of how many followers they have. No, it shouldn't be that difficult. But that's you and me thinking like that. What is your thought on this follower count conversation? From what's average, what's the new normal, if that's the right word? Like, I don't think I've ever uh, chased that. So that virality. No, not at all. and i mean if you do good content i'm convinced that the brands really do come because all the brands really do come and now i think you're also in the middle at that unique spot where you're doing pr for brands and you're a creator yeah. so i feel like you have that sweet spot of yeah. being able to understand what brands are looking for yeah. can you share some wisdom from this from this point of view from this actually mix point of view right um i would definitely say like with the brands that i work with i am able to constantly tell them that when they are working with creators and everything i need to constantly tell them because they are so uh, in most cases unaware of how things work you know they'll just give these bizarre concepts and expect creators to just kind of uh you know most often i think with brands they very often people think that just because one is paying them one has agreed to pay them that you can one can dictate terms and you know just send them and they'll be doing anything but no it's a two way street so i think uh, i will i use my expertise there to tell them that what is the best way to go about your campaign what is the best this thing uh, and of course using my editorial skills also to kind of fine tune all the messaging captioning writing because i just realized that i mean uh like creators are not writers very often i realize that so i often have to do a lot of cleaning up of texts you know that that are in videos and on captions and everything this so is think, for your paid collabs for your clients for when i'm working with my clients yes no no not me as a creator me as a consultant for for the other creators yeah. essentially yeah. is is do you find that a lot of the newer creators are more like production wise heavy but like you said not necessarily writers per se i mean everyone in is fact, different in fact i'm finding honestly if you ask me in the last one year i'm finding that it's much easier to work with the newer creators because they are uh more dynamic dynamic flexible um whereas i'm slowly weaning away from the older creators because i'm finding like such instances of unprofessionalism lazy behavior lazy production which is sad i'll tell you names after <laughs> this podcast goes on no, but i mean can you just, i see the whole crux of me asking you these questions is because a you're in this middle sweet spot like i'm calling it i feel like it'll be really interesting if you can even just share a lazy experience like for example i know you did have a particular instance where somebody shared deliverables for you like months later mm. i know about that particular instance and i feel like that happens across industries yeah. and there's just different ways of different people operating it's not correct but it unfortunately does happen but what about like other aspects like what do you mean when someone's lazy when they've committed to deliverables i mean like i mean just a lazy video like you know they'll just like if i mean i had this one instance where it was a very top beauty brand uh that you know and the creator was being paid handsomely but the picture that came out was just like as though she had just like kind of put no thought into it and just gone to her living room and shot and it's sad you know because when the brand trusts you i also feel that sometimes when the brand trusts you uh and these are a list creators you know uh i feel a lot of a list creators as they are getting older and this is the truth many of them are becoming very lackadaisical in there and because one is taking it for granted for granted 
but the point is the brands are giving their work to someone who's half their age who and is, will charge them half the money also. may not be may, may even be expensive or cheap but mm. i'm just saying that someone who's doing amazing very edgy stuff who's you know really willing to work with you and is like you know is easy to have a conversation with the uh, this thing but mm, with the brand to make a final make the final product really nice you know so yeah. i feel like newer creators are at, again such a beautiful spot because they know exactly what to do and what not to do they have like right off the gate when they start their production is amazing i love that for them yeah. i feel like the advantages they have are so many of course the disadvantage also is the fact that they are entering a very competitive market whereas so many of us because we started early we earned our credibility fairly early as well because and i look at some of these 18 and 20 year olds and the way they dance i'm like you know what i wish i could dance like oh, that oh yeah look at the way they move all effortless. of them effortless effortless like i'm like okay i feel like one uh, uncle looking at all these people but yeah i mean and the confidence to be honest confidence. i feel like gen z is really it's a, it is a generation i'm 31 for context and i feel like it is a gen, it is a generation that i'm sometimes confused by sometimes inspired by and i'm like half of you really know what you're doing and half of you don't know what you're doing i think it's a nice mix i also say that you know i love working with the new lot i'm not one of those like typical seniors who will say oh these juniors have no, no then you would just be like everything. those elitist journalists yeah. i just you like i'm very cool to let them work the way they want and you know give them that tell me your favorite favorite collaboration from you as a creator like i'm um, don't say apple again no no, no of that. course not <laughs> what's your like absolute something that you created that was unique with a brand or something that just really is something that you feel like will be left behind as part of rian george's legacy i would definitely say this was my favorite uh, one of my favorite collaborations actually it's not really a collaboration because it was no brand participated and it was all self funded when i went uh, in december to agra to showcase those artists and i did a whole series where i met up with different artists in agra whether they were ardozi artists or marble inlay artists or uh, heritage people um, and i made separate videos on each of them and all of those videos uh, have so well. crossed the 3 4 million mark and you know they were all viral videos uh, those definitely have been the most memorable campaign that i've done in recent times and with a brand what would you say like a brand experience that has been a brand experience like two weeks ago i was invited by audi to go to austria to do a ice uh, uh, and training academy a driving academy in the ice where i had to drive in the snow and on these frozen lakes and drift and everything so that was a highly uh, intimidating experience at first you know to be able to taking all these to to have to take all these sports cars on the ice and drift them and everything when i've never drifted in my life uh, but yeah i would definitely say that that was one of my recent lovely brand experiences that's awesome I feel like you've shared so much. You've answered so many of my really? questions. Thank you. Some of which I've really poked you into spilling the beans okay. on. I appreciate you. My pleasure. You. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we do so much of this uh, offline, and I feel like the fact that I got a fraction of that out here is just makes me happy because you're someone who really, truly has had a very unique journey. You've gone from so many different spaces one to another, and mm -hmm. you're someone who really doesn't take things for granted. And I appreciate that about you. Welcome to my personal favorite segment slide into my DMs. This is where I take a peek into my guests DMs and yes, I'll be sharing mine too. In this no holds barred segment, we nose dive into our guests inboxes as well as messages from you to us from my Instagram. Buckle up for a potentially scandalous round of messages and some sweet ones too. Let's go. So on my pod I have the segment called slide into my DMs. Ooh. This can is, I slide into your DMs? You always do. <laughs> With lovely posts. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes you <laughs> ruin my explore. Rian George will send me DMs, uh reels that nobody should be sending anybody. I don't even know why they're on no the internet. No respectable person. <laughs> well, and then my entire algorithm will go for a toss so there are times from beauty feed to porn feed and i'm like where are you finding this well they pop up on my feed i Why can't help it why are they on your feed blame it on instagram okay no no you also must be searching for certain things for to make it onto your algorithm no, friend you. and i'm always like wait why is he why is he looking at these things on instagram and ruining my algo but wait my point of but your husband loves all this huh? let me tell you he oh, also sends me all this rubbish rubbish I, i will not believe this about my pati 
Gerard, I'm I'm not going to show your wife what you send me, but okay. Well, I know what I'm doing after I get home today. <laughs> um, listen, what we do is slide into my DMs. Is uh, I've been invited for a threesome. <gasps> See, that's the kind of thing I want people to share on the pod. Just spill the beans. Okay, wait, is this by another influencer or is this just no. some follower? Uh, fashion, fashion, someone from fashion. Okay, and I have to ask: Did you say yes? Well, certainly not. <laughs> I just had to ask. Do you not know me? Wait, did they just, how Victorian I am? Did they randomly? Yes, yeah, it's straight away. Means conversation. In DM, context. yeah, like this is someone I knew. So, oh my god, someone you knew? Yeah, very well. Wait, the, I'm so confused, and I have so many questions that I will have to there save is, huh, for okay, after the huh. pod. But this is someone you knew that is sliding in your DMs and asking you to have a threesome with yeah. them. I need a couple of seconds to process this. What about like followers? Do you get like? Do you have people? You obviously you're single. You're eligible. I'm sure you have a lot of people sliding into your DMs, even beyond the people you. How go. can you assume I'm single? Because I know you well enough. <laughs> Are you forgetting we are friends beyond yeah. this pod? I know things about your life. I wish I didn't know. <laughs> so if I don't answer a call from Rian, I will have like. Twenty messages from him in a span of ten seconds, and the messages will be like, "Call me back, or I'm going to cut myself. Call me back, or I'm jumping off the balcony." So this is a fairly dramatic person. person. <laughs> uh, so sometimes when I, you know, if I'm wearing something short and he's just feeling bitchy towards me, you'll be like, "Are you dressing up like an escort these days?" And I'm like, "Stop slut shaming me, Rian." <laughs> But I know you're like just. Stupid about your sense of humor, and uh, that's why I'm saying I really need to sit through your DMs because I feel that in your house over chicken curry. Done. Thank you for coming on the pod. Thank you, my darling.